The long speculated sequel to Super Mario 64 was known as Super Mario 128. It was long thought a simple tech demo that was discarded in favor of Super Mario Sunshine. But did you know this was all a lie? A magnum opus that shows Shigeru Miyamoto's ambition grown without restraint. A video game with one of the most advanced, complex control schemes and a story to match. A story of Mario's Revenge, a project kept secret by Nintendo for years. In this unreleased game, developed exclusively for the N64 disk drive attachment, Bowser has abducted not just Peach, but Daisy too. Mario has just had enough, so he takes the fight to Bowser's castle. Now Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to change up the gameplay from 64 with a new ability for Mario. Word is he'd binged a lot of Indiana Jones at that time, as he is insistent about incorporating a whip mechanic. There is pushback from the team, but Miyamoto won't take no for an answer. In fact, he himself codes in a lot of flying enemies inaccessible to Mario from the ground, forcing his staff to implement the whip. One staff member jokes that because Mario is Italian, it should be a, a spaghetti whip. Miyamoto latches onto this concept with great enthusiasm, praising the staff member, unaware it was supposed to be a joke. In fact, it goes further when Mario collects power-ups to fill the spaghetti meter so that he can pull more spaghetti strands out of his fanny pack to form whips. The player would twirl their control stick to have Mario spin the spaghetti like a lasso. It isn't just his staff who are nervous about this idea. Even Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi voices his concerns, but Miyamoto is adamant. There was a desire for more of a story mode this time instead of purely rescuing a princess. JRPGs like Final Fantasy were huge at the time, so a more mature storyline for this game felt appropriate. As Mario journeys through Bowser's castle, he encounters all the Yoshis chained up, their colors being harvested from them. In the audio track for the dungeons, you hear the distant screams of Toad. It's a darker game, and you are faced with constant decisions such as to liberate a Yoshi, or absorb their spaghetti powers to strengthen Mario. Mario can eat spaghetti pickups to recover health, but you eat too many and Mario gets fat, slowing him down, forcing the player to decide between health and dexterity. Rumble pack functionality allows you to feel Mario's ambient breathing, which Miyamoto claims helps make Mario feel more alive. The fatter Mario becomes, the more ragged his breathing, almost like a warning to the player. The Z button, previously used for crouch and long jump in 64, is now just an emote button, only used to make Mario say lines like wahoo, or I hope we make a lots of spaghetti. I've tested a lot of games in my career, but Mario 128 had the most confusing, convoluted control scheme I've ever experienced. Harder than most modern MMORPGs. To pull off the simplest maneuver, like running, you had to hold three buttons and jam up and down on the control stick like you're powering a steam engine. Even just jumping was a five-button spaghetti power technique that consumed half the meter. If you ran out, Mario would stare at the camera, at you, with this disgusted look on his face. After a harrowing fight, Mario spaghetti whips Bowser off the edge of the castle and rescues the girls. But that's when the true villain of the game reveals himself, the fallen demigod, Zarthanks. Zarthanks reveals to Mario that without Bowser to oppose him, nothing can stop his plan of near photosynthesis. He opens his wings and drains all light from the Mushroom Kingdom, rendering the land inhospitable and consuming the soul essence of its inhabitants. Zarthanks offers Mario the choice to save Peach or Daisy's soul. Whichever girl you don't choose has her soul siphoned into Zarthanks' seventh bile duct. And to heighten the shock moment, Zarthanks then faces Mario regardless of your choice and rips his soul out too. This causes Mario to fall into a coma and the second act of the game begins. Now the team is willing to accept that there would be a, a demigod Zarthanks as the true boss of the game, but act two is where Miyamoto really goes off the rails. Mario is woken up in a Peruvian jungle next to a seaplane piloted by Luigi. Luigi hands Mario an ancient relic and tells him, we have to go. Out of the jungle comes a tribe of Koopa Troopers led by Bowser, who is in hot pursuit of the Mario brothers. Instead of a spaghetti whip, Mario now has a real whip and he uses it to fend off the troopers. They take off in the seaplane and Luigi explains the relic is the key piece to an ancient artifact that they're going to need to reassemble in Cairo, Egypt. Along the way, they meet up with Peach, or Daisy, if that's the girl he chose to save, who warns them of the danger awaiting them in Cairo, while also giving them the Super Mushroom of Legend, but they're attacked by the Koopa Kids. Bowser Jr. attempts to steal the mushroom, but it burns a logo into his palm. 
They fend off the attack and arrive in Cairo, but Bowser has beaten them to it. He pushes the trio into the deadly tomb and reveals he will use the relics to reassemble the fabled Staff of Ra. Now it's at this point the team have an intervention with Miyamoto. They explain you just can't simply plagiarize the entire plot of Raiders of the Lost Ark and put it in a Mario game. But Miyamoto will have none of it. He is too big a fan of Western media. He wants to replace Charles Martinet, the English voice of Mario, with Harrison Ford. He claims Harrison is just so cool. The team cannot believe this is happening. Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi sends in Satoru Iwata, then head of corporate planning, to privately confront Miyamoto inside his office. The team reports the only sentence they overhear in a raised voice is, Mr. Miyamoto, stop. Miyamoto sheepishly gives in, offering a long bow and apology to his team. Mario wakes up from his coma inside Bowser's castle, and the final confrontation against Zarthanks begins. This portion of the game lets you freely roam the rest of Bowser's castle looking for upgrades. Mario can acquire the meatball cannon to blast enemies, he can enhance his whip to be longer, deadlier, and to fling marinara globules which can stick to walls and foes, a mechanic they would later repurpose to create Splatoon. You rediscover Green Yoshi, whose body Bowser has since deconstructed and repurposed into a murder bike. Mario fires up Yoshi and rides through the castle, spaghetti whipping Zarthanks' giant enemy cockroach as he goes. Once you reach the top of the castle, there's a shining light and Mario finds himself in a silent and endless white field filled with each and every enemy you killed in the previous game, Super Mario 64, based on your save data. Goombas, Koopas, Piranha Plants, and even that one baby penguin that everyone drops off the cliff. Miyamoto is reportedly very excited about this functionality. You also encounter the soul of the girl you didn't save. Depending on your dialogue choices, the ghost will either give Mario a hug or a slap. That is before Zarthanks teleports behind her and consumes her soul for a second time. By absorbing the soul of the girl in the physical and spirit world, Zarthanks ascends to become an actual god. Mario is beaten down and all hope seems lost. But that's when the ghost of Luigi, who apparently died at some point, tells Mario the only way they can beat Zarthanks is to work together. Mario agrees. So he siphons Luigi's soul and devours it, transforming into the legendary warrior Super Mario. Mario issues Zarthanks with a challenge, let's -a go, as they begin an epic fight atop Bowser's castle. They're evenly matched until Zarthanks reveals this isn't even his final form, and he transforms again, this time into near infinity god Zarthanks. He pummels Mario, breaks his whip, absorbs his spaghetti powers. Outmatched, the player is presented with a surrender option, but regardless of your choice, at the last possible moment, Bowser reappears carrying the Master Sword. He throws it to Super Mario, and with a cry of, You never should have touched my spaghetti, Mario drives the blade into near infinity Zarthanks' exposed heart valve. Mario takes the god's corpse and impales his ruin upon the highest spike of Bowser Castle. As you might imagine, the team is pretty pumped to bring Miyamoto's epic finale to life in game, until a dose of reality hits them. The N64 barely has the processing power to run two different text fonts at the same time, therefore an epic duel between gods would likely be out of the question. Their ambition waters down to maybe there is no Zar thanks. Instead, maybe Mario just kind of fights Bowser again. By the time Nintendo had a working copy of the game, development and interest had shifted to the forthcoming next generation GameCube console. Satoru Iwata was central to the decision to scrap Mario 128, saying it was pretty much the stupidest thing he'd ever seen. He was shortly after promoted to president of Nintendo, many say because he was the only employee willing to call out Shigeru Miyamoto's nonsense. All was not lost though, the concept of the spaghetti meter was salvaged into the flood system for Mario Sunshine. Miyamoto was ordered to run every idea past Iwata in future to prevent any more 128 incidents. The legacy of the game continues to this day, and in fact it's still possible to play an alpha build of the game directly in the Mario 64 cartridge even now. If you collect 128 coins and spin final stage Bowser 128 times, you'll hear a chime and a playable version of Mario 128 will appear as an option from the main menu. Thank you for listening to the truth. Thank you so much for playing my game. Bye-bye!